In March 2022, there was an explosion in the Ivano-Frankivsk region of Ukraine. A big, well-fortified underground ammunition depot, still of Soviet construction, went up in the air after being hit by a single rocket. Soon it was announced that this rocket was a Kinzhal, and immediately there was a big fuss about it, full of praise and devastating criticism. Hey, it's Sky here, and today we're gonna try to figure out what this weapon is, what it's capable of, and whether it's really the world's first mass-produced representative of hypersonic weapons. Kinjal Missile Complex is in front of us now. In 1987, the USSR and the USA signed the INF Treaty, a treaty on eliminating intermediate-range and shorter-range missiles which aimed to neutralize the threat of using missiles with a range of 500 to 5,500 kilometers and capable of destabilizing the military balance and provoking a nuclear war. The implementation of this pact aided peace but deprived the armed forces of cutting-edge tools. Work on creating new weapons prototypes commenced almost immediately, aiming to ensure their effectiveness without violating any international agreements. So, in 1988 in the USSR, a project of a complex was initiated, which over the years gained recognition as Iskander. And the 9K720 complex, despite all the problems of the 90s, was created, and by 2020 it became one of Russia's main missile clubs. Iskander is optionally equipped with several missile options, including a ballistic missile, its simplified export version, and a cruise missile. Right now we're interested in the basic modern ballistic version. So the 9M723 is a single-stage ballistic missile weighing about 4.5 tons and with a range of just over 400 kilometers. The rocket is under the control of various systems including inertial and satellite navigation, as well as optical and radar homing heads for guidance and targeting. She can have a variety of combat parts installed in her head, ranging from regular fragmentation and cassette ones to penetrating and, of course, nuclear ones. Externally, she's minimalist. The body has simple contours and the only protruding elements are the gas jet rudders near the engine nozzle and a set of arrow-shaped rudders at the tail. In theory, along with the radio-absorbing coating, this should make the rocket less noticeable on radars. In addition, the rocket received sophisticated countermeasures and decoys, which were released during the flight to imitate its heat and radio signature. The engine is solid fuel. He gets the rocket on its flight path and accelerates it to a speed of around 2100 meters per second, over six times the speed of sound. So, does that mean that Iskander is a hypersonic missile with six stages? Technically, in terms of speed ranges, hypersonic starts after reaching a speed of 5 Mach. A lot of regular folks jump to the conclusion that if a rocket is flying at those speeds, it's hypersonic, but that's not the case. First of all, I gotta say that most of them big ballistic missiles can fly at them speeds, but that ain't enough to earn them the title of hypersonic weapons. The trick is in maneuvering. Hypersonic missiles don't just fly really fast, but they can also maneuver. This is an important detail, as ballistic missiles fly along simple trajectories that can be calculated in advance, making interception easier. Hypersonic missiles constantly change course, making countering them very difficult, which makes them a highly dangerous weapon. You might think that you just need to instruct ballistic missiles how to maneuver, but it is not that straightforward. Jumping in at full speed brings a whole lot of serious problems with it. For example, a rocket engine can easily reach speeds of over 5 Mach, but it only works for a short time and after the rocket is turned off, it continues to fly by inertia, losing speed, which soon drops below the supersonic threshold. From long playing options, a straight flow air jet engine is capable of providing prolonged thrust or gliding in the upper layers of the atmosphere when a rocket with an aerodynamic shape seems to glide at tremendous speed. The second question, the conditions. A long high-speed flight is accompanied by monstrous overloads, heating, as well as plasma clouds around the object that dampen radio signals. An object wrapped in such a blanket becomes mute, blind, and deaf. And that's why they slow down the rocket's speed on the final stretch of the flight. Otherwise their homing heads won't work, 
and they just won't be able to aim. Judging by everything, the 9M723 missile can fly in several modes, including purely ballistic with a trajectory that goes beyond the atmosphere, as well as guided, when the missile flies at a high altitude in the atmosphere and can maneuver with aerodynamic fins. The second mode would let us see the Iskander as hypersonic, but sadly, flight in the atmosphere with maneuvering most likely greatly lowers the speed. And even if he goes at hypersonic speed, he quickly falls out of it. The same thing happens with the range. Her official stats over 400 kilometers can be maxed out in ballistic flight. A maneuverable atmospheric flight can seriously cut this figure. In the final analysis, we can say that Iskander is a serious and very formidable ballistic or maneuverable but not hypersonic missile. I won't go into detail about the MiG-31 right now, it deserves a full-fledged movie. I'll just say that, being created back in the 1970s, this interceptor fighter is still unique, having a number of outstanding characteristics. Flight speeds at 2.5, 2.8 Mach, which is 2,700 to 3,100 km per H, altitude of over 20 km, maximum takeoff weight at 46 tons. The MiG-31 is a heavy high-altitude and high-speed aircraft. These capabilities are necessary for its primary work, intercepting enemy aircraft, but they also have a bonus that could make the MiG a platform for air launch. An air launch is a concept where a rocket is launched not from the Earth, as is typically done, but from an airplane, which serves as a type of first stage, making it more convenient to deliver the payload into space. That's why history knows a lot of attempts to use this concept in commercial space exploration. The idea of aerial launch of military missiles, including ballistic ones, is not new either, and various projects of this kind have been implemented since the 50s. But during the Cold War, there were plenty of classic ways to destroy the world, so the topic was far from being discussed. Now the situation has altered. Conventional weapons are constrained by international treaties, but aerial launches are not addressed within them. So, by creating such a system, in theory you can get a medium or shorter range missile without breaking anything. The idea that had been floating around the high-speed interceptor for many years suddenly crystallized. The MiG-31 has a new role now. So, why did I spend so much time talking about Iskander and Miggy? What does a dagger have to do with Iskander and MiG? Hmm, maybe because it's a dagger, Iskander on a MiG. The Rocket 9C7760 or X47M2, known as Kinjal, is similar in layout and dimensions to the Rocket 9K723, and this decision is quite logical. Why bother making weapons from scratch when you can use an already proven foundation? Nevertheless, it's not worth making a superficial conclusion that they are the same, and you can just take the rocket off the mobile launcher and hang it on the plane. At least application methods require changes to the system's structure. The long description of the 9K723 Iskander missile now simplifies the description of the 9C7760 Kinjal missile. Their fillings are probably practically identical. The main external difference is the presence of a narrowing section with additional fins. Due to her, Kinjal is longer about 7.7M versus 7.3M for Iskander. But this section is just a fairing, needed to improve aerodynamics during suspended flight, and it separates during launch. The weight of the new Scandero versions is estimated to be around 4.5 tons, give or take. I have no idea how much the dagger weighs. She's probably lighter, but unlikely significantly, staying above the 4-ton mark. The dagger's combat parts, weighing about 500 kilograms, are likely close to the Iskandars, including nuclear charges. Goals are also nearby. Fixed secure facilities, headquarters, warehouses and all that jazz. Plus the goal of a little mobility, like ships, because you can't just take and not make another killer of aircraft carriers. The plane of course isn't the same as its brethren. The aircraft MiG-31K is a modification of the MiG-31BM. The modification is not radical, but it's serious. They replaced some of the onboard equipment, probably removed the radar because a complex and heavy system is not really needed here, 
and they also replaced the weapon systems. Air-to-air -air missiles have been replaced by a single air-to-ground missile, which was hung under the fuselage after modifying and strengthening the suspension. And how does this work? In the first stage, the plane with the rocket takes off and reaches the starting position at a distance of up to 700 kilometers, which is the combat radius of the MiG-31. At the start stage, the plane can climb to an altitude of about 15 kilometers and accelerate to a speed of about 2,100 to 2,400 kilometers per hour over two Machs. These are impressive figures for the MiG, but the size and weight of the cargo should greatly limit the capabilities of the aircraft, so don't expect any records here. When launching, the rocket is dropped from the carrier, after which the tail fairing separates and the main engine is ignited. The rocket's flight is like an Iskander missile. Let's try to repeat the patterns, but with the adjustment that the rocket already has decent speed and altitude at ignition. Not a bad bonus compared to Iskander Zeros. The first trajectory is ballistic. The rocket quickly gains altitude, going beyond the atmosphere. At the same time, the airplane-shaped ramp allows the rocket to accelerate even more, reaching speeds of up to 10 Machs or even more. Sources give both 12 and 13 mags. The next stage is the longest one. The rocket is already flying over a thousand kilometers on a parabolic trajectory with the engine turned off. At the final stage of the flight, the Kinshal enters the atmosphere, starts maneuvering with aerodynamic control surfaces, rapidly decelerates to supersonic speeds, activates the homing head, and vertically plunges into the target. In another scenario, a trendy rocket known as an aeroballistic or quasi-ballistic missile gains altitude of several tens of kilometers after launch, but remains within the atmosphere. The aerodynamic fins remain active, and the rocket can maneuver throughout the entire flight. And once again, as it gets closer to the target, it decelerates to supersonic velocities, activates the self-guided warhead, and vertically descends into the target area with precision. So is it hypersonic or not? When flying outside the atmosphere, the speeds are maximum, but a significant part of the route is purely ballistic. In a scenario with atmospheric flight, the rocket can maneuver all the time, but its hypersonic speed is most likely lost pretty quickly. The dagger is a quite advanced and substantial component of the aviation's striking potential. Amazing air-based ballistic missile. But maybe I'll disappoint someone. Hardly can it be considered a full-fledged hypersonic missile. And if you can, with a bunch of caveats. Honestly, considering the modern fashion, I can totally imagine that the hypersonic label was stuck to it by political technologists and PR specialists. The operators and creators of the complex themselves know what their products are capable of and don't really worry about what experts on television, Telegram or YouTube say about them in videos like the one you're watching right now. So what's the advantage of a complex Kinshell system if we already have Iskander? First and foremost, it's the range, which is about 2,000 kilometers. Now, it's worth noting that we're discussing the range of the entire complex, including missile and carrier. For instance, with the STU-22M3, we mentioned 3,000 kilometers, and an extra 1,000 is provided by a longer carrier. It's the same rocket man. But even without counting this little trick, the rocket flies on its own for 1,300 to 1,500 kilometers several times farther than the range of the Iskander missile. The speed of the dagger, no matter what it is in different scenarios, seriously surpasses its ground counterpart for most of the trajectory. Considering current protection, if it's already hard to intercept Iskander, then it's even harder to intercept Kinzhal. There are also some logistical advantages. Unlike the ground complex, the dagger, suspended under the plane if necessary, can be quickly transferred to the desired location and used. Besides, unlike the Eskanders, whose location can be tracked, the high mobility of the MiG makes the dagger even more unpredictable in terms of launch location. There are a few downsides, but they exist too. The outstanding characteristics of a dagger are very expensive. Iskander Kinjal is a precision weapon that, in the most favorable circumstances, is designed to be nuclear. To destroy a garage with rockets, the cost of which is similar to that of a good airplane, is excessive extravagance, something that occurs not without this, but is undesirable. The situation where dozens of missiles launch daggers simultaneously is highly unlikely. This is the reason why rockets, 
although used in military actions, are used rarely and selectively, serving more as demonstrations of power rather than weapons. And here comes another question about attacking well-protected targets. Protected not by sand and concrete, but by AD and MD systems. I'm not inclined to throw slogans about the fact that a dagger is an unstoppable bolt of Zeus. Catching her is tough, but definitely not impossible. And to overcome serious resistance, you need a powerful strike. It's possible with a bunch of rockets. This might not work out. We don't know the truth. Rocket bursting through umbrellas of modern missile defense systems did not, and I hope will not, happen. As high-precision weapons for destroying local targets, classic cruise missiles or even unmanned aerial vehicles look much more optimal. Maybe they don't fly as fast and explode as loudly, but they are much simpler, more versatile, and cheaper. The second problem concerns not just the dagger, but all high-precision weapons. To hit the target precisely, the rocket requires all the data about it. The intelligence, DRVO aircraft and satellites are responsible for target designation, and their number is small. It's one thing when we're talking about a stationary target, and it's another thing if the target is mobile. You can't launch a rocket with an order to fly to the theater of military operations, find something cool there and destroy it, and the enemy ship won't be reporting its coordinates and just wait to be blown up. Another drawback of the concept is surprisingly the carrier. The problem here is that the dagger on the MiG-31 doesn't complement the role of an interceptor with the role of a bomber, it replaces it. Now the plane is a clean carrier, which can no longer operate in the air. The MiG-31 is no longer in production, so the more Kinzhal carriers are manufactured, the fewer interceptors there will be. The unique capabilities of the MiG make it an important component of the air defense system, and modifications can potentially cause damage to this aircraft. The solution to this problem is obvious. In theory, other planes can also use a dagger. Currently, work is ongoing to suspend rockets on 222M3. The Tupolev is bigger and heavier than the MiG, so it can carry multiple missiles at once. Plus, it flies further, but it flies slower and lower, so the flight characteristics of the missile itself will probably be more modest. The same goes for other planes, and the question of how easy it is to adapt them for Kinzhal and how effective the first stages will be should be asked on an individual basis. The first modified MiG-31K with a prototype of the Kinzhal missile took off in 2016. The active rocket launch tests commenced right away. According to a bunch of sources, the tests were wrapped up in the year 2021 when they kicked off mass production. Nowadays, Kinzhal is already a done deal. Living and applicable weapon, which may not have become hypersonic, but definitely started the hypersonic race. Write your thoughts on the dagger, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Wishing you speedy flights on airplanes, smooth landings, and may you only encounter hypersonic knives at exhibitions.